Now, Typhoon Namadol has killed at least four people and injured more than 80 over the weekend. It's been downgraded at the moment to a cyclone. It crossed to the northeastern coast and headed out to the Pacific Ocean. Hundreds of thousands of homes are without power. And at one stage, more than nine million people were urged to leave their homes. Let's cross to our correspondent in Tokyo, Rupert Winfield Hayes. Rupert, just tell us how bad it has been and, and how is it for those affected at the moment? Yeah, as you say, the, the Typhoon Nanmadol has now been downgraded and has broken up over northern Japan. But for the last three days, it really has been a monster, monster storm, the like of which uh, Japan has rarely seen only a, a handful of other times a storm of this size in the last half century. And it's hit uh, the southern Kyushu Islands, island of Kyushu on Sunday, and then it has just churned right across the whole of Japan over the last two and a half days and really bringing in, in, in very destructive winds, 150 mile an hour winds, over 200 kilometer an hour winds, uh, which have caused quite a lot of uh, damage to electricity supplies and structural damage. But really the big thing has been the amount of rain, really astonishing amounts of rain have fallen over Western and central Japan. In Kyushu, they measured uh, more than 70 centimeters of rain falling uh, on Sunday and into Monday. And even in Honshu, uh, 40 centimeters of rain fell yesterday over, over Western parts of Honshu. So that's been the major problem causing a lot of local flooding. Uh, there is a, a, a concern still about the possibility of landslides and mudslides. Um, as you said, the, 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 the toll from this uh, has been fortunately very small uh, in terms of, of loss of human life, um, but it really has caused massive disruption right across Japan for the last three days. And what are scientists uh, saying about linking this with climate change? Well, they're absolutely linking it to climate change and also to the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific Ocean this year. We're in a La Nina year which will have exacerbated uh, the size of this typhoon. But really, this is part of a trend which we're very clearly seeing. The data is, is very apparent. In the late 70s, 1970s, the Pacific Ocean used to produce about one super typhoon a year. Now we're seeing between four and five super typhoons developing in the Western Pacific every year. And that trend is expected to increase. Not only are these storms getting bigger and more frequent, but they are moving further north, away from the equator, towards Japan, China and the Korean Peninsula. And so uh, this part of the world is just getting battered more often by bigger storms. And, and Rupert, just in terms of the areas that have been affected, were they heavily populated? And when you see these incredible heavy winds and gusts, uh, gu you know, gusts and the rain that you mentioned, what is the practical impact of that? Yeah, I mean, Japan is a very mountainous, but also a very densely populated country. Uh, you know, the valleys and the coastal plains are very densely populated in Japan. And that's why you see these ex huge figures of nine million people being told to leave their homes. Uh, people go to local evacuation centers, often very close to their homes to spend the night so that they're in a safe place and then they'll go home in the morning. So it's not like whole towns or whole cities are being evacuated, uh, but it has affected very large numbers of people. And many people remain today without electricity, uh, and it will take time uh, for, for, for everything to get back to normal. OK, Rupert Wingfield-Hayes, thank you very much indeed.